Hey, everybody. Welcome to the Find and Follow podcast, where we are all about helping you find and follow Jesus in your everyday life. Joined today by the regular host, Kyle and Craig and Scott. And we've got a guest on today, Sue Walker. Welcome to the podcast. Hello. We're so glad that you're here today. Yeah. Sue is a, a friend, co-worker, and she's going to share her story today. So it's going to be good. We are, um, I don't know, what day is it? I don't the even 18th, know the date. 19th. 19th. Ooh, 19th. Man, I was off. We are almost halfway through 23 here at Mission Church. Um, encouraging people to jump in uh, in 2023 centered around who God is, and taking 23 days, started on the 8th, that's why I was trying to figure out the date there, in case you weren't following along. 11 days. 8 plus 11, 20, 19, 17, (laughs) give or take when you start, (laughs) like the 9th, you count, you know, the But the message series goes all the way to February 12th. Correct. But these 23 days to really encourage people to um, be more intentional about prayer, fast, give up something so you can add more room and more time for God, uh, to do it in community. And it's been encouraging. We've had a lot of cool things happening. We've added a couple of prayer gatherings during the week to make more time and more room for us to gather as a bigger group and just some cool stuff. Um, got a text last night from a new listener. Ooh, new listener. He texted me a couple of weeks ago. Hey, what's the name of that podcast you have? And then sent it to him, and I didn't think about it much. Um, so for 23, uh, Eric is giving up uh, Sports Talk Radio on his commute. Oh. And he's been listening to the podcast. He started on episode number one. What? <laughs> Whoa. He's Whoa. got a ways to go to get here. Right? Yeah. He's going he's gonna to be like, hey, two Eric, years welcome. Now. Yeah, welcome in 2026. It's nice to see you. We were talking about you in the past. This oh is, my God. This is episode 112. So we have put out a few episodes. What's his count so like? I mean, is, is he, number one uh, when we went on the platforms or all the way back to Theology Thursday? All the way back. All the all way, way, the way back. back. Wow. Yeah. So I took all of Theology Thursday. This is the history of the podcast in case you're curious <laughs> we ran it from march end of march of 2020 are you asking or you're i'm kind of okay. asking it was like the I end of no march first of april 2020 and through the summer we did theology thursday yeah. and then life got back to normalish and whatever we switched to a podcast version um september of that year so i went back and i took all those youtube videos and i made them podcast form as well and Kicked them out all in one day wow. when, when the podcast started. So, yeah, episodes like 1 through 19 are Theology Thursday, and good luck. He, he goes, <laughs> no, it's great. He's been very, he said it's been helpful uh, getting to know us a little bit. And then he goes, he goes, your poor dad having to put up with you guys. <laughs> <laughs> For sure. I do remember some of those episodes. <laughs> they were if off I the rails. It was pandemic, right? We're yeah. all a little nutty there. <laughs> were we going through the Gospel of John? That's, that's where we started, yeah. yeah. Yeah, and we're in Matthew now. Yeah. So anyways, that's one one of the cool things, again, a reminder to last night about the pandemic. Like, the podcast has come from it, and it's been helpful, and it's carried on. So that's been good. And then for 23, like, giving us sports talk radio, I get that. But the sneaky part is sports wasn't really w- happening in 2020. So maybe Eric gets a little farther. He'll realize we talk about Gonzaga basketball a lot. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I got my Gonzaga shirt. There you go. I might be going to the kennel tonight at 6 what? p.m. What? Oh, we're not friends. Sue, anymore. where are you at on sports? Your baseball? I'm baseball, football, basketball. Football? Now, what's your football? I like just, NFL. But you just watch any and all teams or you just watch Seahawks? I watch all teams. You're, I probably am more of a football fan than Rob is. <laughs> really? Yeah. You like it. Okay. Yeah. Sunday after church was like, okay, who's on? Who's playing? I like it. I Playoffs know. now? You got anybody that you're real keen on? No, no. I'm not okay. excited about it. So, how do you feel about the Seahawks? You used to live in the I'm Seattle. I'm so area. sad. Okay. I'm so sad. No. Yeah. No, I love the Seahawks, but I'm just sad. Yeah. Yeah, but they made the playoffs. That was a little unexpected. Well, it was cool. A little unexpected. I don't it know. was very I, cool. No. I, that I, game was. No, the game was second half was horrible. Yeah. I always vote for anybody who's up against Tom Brady, so it doesn't matter which team it is. It's like, hey, uh, oh, you and me both. Yeah, yeah. So this Sunday's game was amazing. Yeah, so he's, oh, was so he's good. gonna hit the retirement home. There you go. I think he's at that age. <laughs> yeah. And then baseball, you and Rob, big baseball fans. Yes, we love the Mariners. We have many season tickets to the Spokane Indians games. So yeah, we live the summer for baseball. We love it. 
And then basketball. See, Eric thought this wasn't sports talk radio. We're <laughs> getting into it. Basketball. Now, I know March Madness is big. You, I love that. You yes. You love that. I'm what a Zags fan. Zags? Okay. Yeah. That's, Anything that's, else? That's kind of my thing. I like the the local, the, you know, I'm a unity person, so I'm like, oh, yeah, let's all talk about the Zags. But if you're talking about, like, you know, the Padres, like poor Brent does, there's <laughs> just not many fans around, right? So I like to yeah. talk with people about it. Okay. <laughs> How, how many tickets did you get for tonight? I had zero. No, how many tickets did you get? I didn't get any. Well, you're going. <laughs> yes. So how, how I how is looking for an invite. That's no, right. I know he is. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm looking for the... I got an invite from a person who got an invite. So it's like secondhand invite. Wow. Huh. They didn't have tickets. They have somebody who has tickets, and they said invite a friend. Oh, so you're I just going by yourself? I was second on the list. Oh. oh it's just you. There's four of us going yeah. as a group. We'll talk later. <laughs> it's, you sound like one of my children. They're like, take me. I'm like, it's not my choice. I got invited. <laughs> so find and follow Jesus. It's good, good. It's a train. It helps you in your everyday you know life, Kyle, to be. It's a good thing you're unoffendable, that you're yep. like, you cheer for other people yeah, when good absolutely. things happen in their life. I'm so yes. excited for you, Scott. Yes. It's so good. Have fun. Cheer loud. I will. It's LMU. Should be, yeah. should be pretty straightforward tonight. It should be good, though. <laughs> You all right? Yeah, I'm good. <laughs> I'm going to be here at the church praying tonight. I'll yes. be here. So, okay. mm-hmm. I'll be here 4.30 till I get 5, picked up yeah. when we need to head down. To the <laughs> I'm going to be, uh, 5, I may have to bounce a little early from prayer. I'm just saying. <laughs> we can pray on the move. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Pray without ceasing. Yes. I will be <laughs> He'll there. He'll be praying for the eggs to win. Amen. <laughs> That's right. So, hey, number six in the nation they're looking like the upward trend is real good they're looking better as a team they've had some stiff competition in conference yeah. so i hope we're not like dera- oh i guess eric's probably listening to this in 2026 so he's i'll probably he's let him off, know a little shout yeah, out he's off know. the train of the maybe the sports talk radio or else we're just derailing his fast well that he's it's trained. just for 23 days i mean one of the things that i'm let's get back to 23 yes, were you please. going there yeah that's okay. what i was trying there to there do there you go I, I just encourage um i've heard from several different people how uh, for them, fasting has been really they're adding to. And so not just what can I take away, which is a, a default kind of traditional, like I'm just giving up. And the thing that you, I think people are adding to their life is like pain and suffering and agony and like <laughs> perseverance. I'm like, I'm learning to like go without coffee for 40 days, you know, for Lent and like that's it. But really they're truly adding things that are helping them connect with Jesus. And just even our community group, people sharing what they've been doing uh, this last week. and So it's been just really, really cool. Yeah, I, I I, think that when you have a healthy understanding of fasting, and luckily I didn't. When I was a youth student at, uh, at Maribu Chapel, and I think Legacy it was called at the time. Oh, yeah. And I was on the worship team, and uh, I remember getting a, I think it was a text from either, so Kenny and Karina were our best friends, and they were on the worship team with us, and maybe Pastor Ryan. I think we were doing like an outreach night or something, and I was playing on the worship team. And someone kind of challenged us to fast. Hey, let's take this next day before this big event we have and fast. And I was... A like, food fast. Yeah, food. We're not going to eat food and let's fast. And I'm like, I was kind of like, why? What's the point? And and the they just said something like, hey, every time you think about food or you get hungry, let's use that moment to pray for what God's going to do for the next event and and pray for strength. And I just remember being like, oh, that's super cool. Like, I get that. And then, obviously, fasting from food at school. I think it was just at school the whole day or whatever. I was hungry a lot, and I would think <laughs> about food. But every time for me, it was a prompt and a reminder, God's going to do something tomorrow night at this cool youth event that I get to be a part of, and I get to lead worship. And so I prayed for that. And the amount of times that I was focused on who God was and what God was going to do throughout the day because I was able to kind of remove something that would typically be like, oh, I'm going to go get a snack or I'm going to go down to lunch or whatever it was, was shifting my focus. And, and how old? I was in high school. Yeah. Yeah. Which is, as a high school dude, you're like, when do I need a snack? Like every yeah, 28 minutes. all the minutes. time. Yeah, yeah, yeah every, like, every period, every break. <laughs> yeah, like right? starving. When you get home from school, you remember just being starving? Yeah, oh, yeah. Yeah, my kids are like, eat a whole Gotta meal. Got to grab a Go-Gurt and some pizza bites or pizza bagels. We had a lot of those. Right. But I just remember that being a healthy understanding at a young age because I, I – didn't really know what fasting was and why you do that. And so it was a really good reminder for me, like, oh, yeah, it's, it's for me, it's to shift my focus. And every time I think about that, now I'm going to be 
um, again, ad- adding to my day a lot more prayer than as a high school student was regularly part of my life at school because I'm thinking about this and doing this. So it added a whole le- level of depth of of prayer and focus on God for this thing that I was asking him for and, and seeking him for. So by subtracting this thing, I was I was adding a lot to my prayer life. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Other cool things, stories, uh, personal experience, 23. Um, you, you guys had a cool prayer time last Thursday. With someone receiving some healing. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> we uh, we just opened it up for anybody that had a prayer request. And a gal was there. She's just been struggling with um, physical pain. And the doctors have not been able to figure out what's going on. And so she's continuing continually having this pain and she just was broken. She was crying. She's like, I just don't know what to do or where to turn. And so I asked her if it was okay if we prayed for her and we brought her up front and she was fine with that. And we prayed for her and prayed healing over her. And um, by the time we were done praying for her, she was like, I have relief. And she was just crying. She goes, I haven't had this kind of relief for a while. And I've just been praying for even just a little relief. She said, this is amazing. And I haven't talked to her since, so I'm excited to hear how she's doing. I'm hoping that she's continually having that healing relief and that God is just bringing that relief to her body. So yeah, that's super cool. cool. Because we, we're just reading through the scriptures here on the podcast, and it's all the time. Jesus, crowd showed up, and he healed all their diseases and relieved them of pain uh, and instantaneously. Yeah. And it's just the power of God at work, and it's fun to experience that. It's really cool. Yeah. We, uh, we just got back from winter camp this last week with our middle school and high school students. We took 47 of our students and joined with 446 other people to be at camp. Uh, and th- we had one night that we just prayed and believed for physical healing, and it was just, it was amazing and miraculous what God did when we show up and seek him, and I, I think it's awesome that it, the winter camp season and the start of the year uh, coincided with our 23 and just being intentional, because that's what these students in our ministry were doing. I mean, they're paying money to go to camp and spend a weekend to be intentional about seeking Jesus and not playing video games or doing other things that they could be doing. Well, they play video games at camp too, but yeah. They're not distracted it's, by some of the things. Don't make it sound too yeah. spiritual. <laughs> they're not having any fun. There was a lot of fun. Oh, yeah, they're not sport. flirting. We, yeah. Or, yeah. Oh, yeah, There's no. we don't feed them, so they're fasting the entire oh, time. Oh, fast, yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> but it's a little anyway, bit of a money a saver. Of solitude, just a quiet a uh, silence weekend. It just reminded me of the power of God. and the thing, Like, there was literally this one kid at camp who walked, to, walked up to camp on crutches and left holding his crutches under his arm. Come on, And now. it was like... Like, that's what, like, I made me think of, like, wow. Amy McPherson back in the day. And, like, it's just literally, he had, like, I mean, it's not just, like, oh, my tummy hurt. And God, he, like, he had full on, this was the second time blowing his knee out playing football. He had full on ACL and meniscus just trashed and w- walked out of camp. Hold, like, literally, I saw him on the last day. His crutches are under his arm. He's just carrying them out with his luggage. Like, his knees that's just, fabulous. like, yeah. miraculously. That's supernatural. That's yeah. the you know, waiting for a miracle. That's God intersecting yep. uh, heaven on earth thing. So to bring back uh, memories of your youth pastor days, Kyle, being out at camp. Oh, for sure. Yeah. <laughs> yep. yep. Absolutely. It was good. Mm-hmm. And uh, I know a couple, well, at least one new student, she had never been to anything. She's a Trent student, and a friend mm-hmm. invited her from Trent, and so she came to camp. Um, don't know where she's at on her spiritual journey, but uh, uh, five students from Trent, and that's just been a fruit of the ministry of just being a loving neighbor and UGM camp experience for some of them, Mission Club. Uh, some of them come to Fusion, just uh, continually serving with blessing boxes and bite to go and showing up and being present in our community. It's just uh, they get to come and they, they all had a great experience uh, yep. as the report I got. So it's yep. it's cool the what God's doing as we just focus in a little bit more than we normally would. I know for me, just cutting some stuff out digitally, uh, doing some food fast, but the digital thing, just how it, it frees me up to be present in the moment and in people. It's it's sneaky how cluttered my heart can get and my mind can get. And it's not even necessarily on the forefront, but it's just there. And when you kind of detox almost, I think, probably a good term for it, um, just like, okay, there's more room. And isn't Forgot. it funny that, heart, like, once you mind. go through that, you, you don't miss it, right? Like, again, this weekend at camp, you know, we're away from our phones. We're doing a lot of stuff with students and hanging out and being present, right? And then you're like, hey, I wasn't on social media all weekend. And it was like, 
I didn't miss anything. Right? I, no. I didn't. And it's all still there. Yep. If you really need to go find something, I mean, it's it's fine. So. Yeah, yeah. God's doing some cool stuff. I was going to say, I'm fasting. I started with sugar. And I was surprised, because I've done that before, and not for God, but for dieting. And this time I was just, God, what do you want me to give up to you? Like, what can I surrender to you? And he said, sugar is the thing, because it's your idol. It's the thing that you grab for and and all that. And um, usually I have those cravings, and I'm fighting with, oh, I really want that. And this time it was, like, easy. And I was like this is crazy. So literally on Sunday night, I said, God, this is too easy. I feel like I'm fasting because I've told you I'm fasting, but now I feel like I'm asking you to let me, I I want to surrender more to you. So this week I started fasting flour and chips. And so I was like, okay, God, I'm giving those to you. And again, same thing. I'm like, okay, this is too easy, God. And what it's done for me is that the adding is the thankfulness because I'm in a place of surrender to him completely with food because it's been an idol and a problem for me for so long. And I've really been on this journey to find healing in that and not just healing from my own self and trying to get the diet that's going to fix the body, but really the inner healing that God can change me. And um, this morning I was like, God, this is so cool because I grabbed my lunch and I was like, these are all the foods that you made and they taste so good. But I've always been reaching for all these other things that don't help my body, that aren't made to um, bring me health. Um, and I've reached for that pleasure for so long that I didn't even think about the thing. And so I was walking through the grocery store last night and I'm like, there's sugar right there. Like, it was weird. I was like, I've never been to the grocery store and, and smelled sugar. And I was like, I think because I'm not having it, it was just like, there's sugar right there. And it was so it was like this little moment of, God, isn't that so cool that I'm not sitting there smelling that sugar going, okay, I need to stop by the candy aisle and grab something or cookies and grab something or the bakery. And I was like, this is just, it's a miracle. It feels like a miracle in my life. Wow, that's yeah. awesome. It's, that's, that's it's really too. cool. Yeah, yeah, and I love that because it's you're adding to, yeah, and it's not just trying to survive by taking you know taking some away. Well, I'm just gonna like survive it for a bit, and then it'll probably jump back in like it was before. Yeah, I just think I think God's up to some cool stuff in our community and people who are jumping on board, and it really is genuinely like the 23 day emphasis is is like hey just do try something for 23 days. It's genuinely like from our hearts the plan. It's not a bait and switch. We're like, it's 23 days, but then at tw- day 24, we're going to make you feel real guilty if you're going to like go back to whatever. You're going right. to get back on social media, and Scott's going to watch more YouTube videos or whatever, right? <laughs> and Eric's going to be on Sports Eric's going to be on Sports Talk, Talk Radio. Right. Like, <laughs> Got to catch up. <laughs> it's genuinely not that. It's just this emphasized time, and I just know because God is so good, and he's so faithful, and if you do it from more of a genuine place and you experience um, the beauty of God working in our lives, there's going to be things you just you just don't have a desire to go back to. And it's not like you feel like you're giving it up anymore because the desire has really gone down. And it's just going to be the ref- refreshing of our soul that Jesus promises, the full life that he offers. It's like, oh, I'm experiencing that more. Why, why do I want to give that up and go back to some of this other stuff? Um, not that you can't introduce things back into your life or whatever. And then that's that's your personal connection with God on a daily basis. Um, I'm I'm glad he hasn't asked me to give up coffee. So we, <laughs> maybe I should double check for this next there half. You go. <laughs> I did that one time just to just to triple check that. For it how w- long? You know, I don't remember, but I just like probably I, 24 hours. No, it was weeks, maybe months. It might have been just because I was going to Starbucks a lot. It was a comfort thing. It was a thing to do. I was spending too much money, and it wasn't because I I wanted I wanted the caffeine, but I was also like the experience felt like I was doing something, and it just became like I was talking about this last Sunday. If you fast from something, that is a dependence identifier. Like, am I dependent on this? Uh, uh yeah, yeah. It was two seventy eight to get a. A vanilla latte down at Starbucks. That's how old the, you want to price check me. That's how <laughs> I'm old. I'm like, what? This was a long time ago. It <laughs> when was, was this? Where is that Starbucks? Yeah, no, I'm going was, today. <laughs> this was like 22 years. It was a long time ago. It was but pre marriage. Anyways, I just was like, I gotta. God's like, you gotta give that up. So it's not a dependence thing. And I was like, yeah, yeah. 
Craig, you were going to say something. Well, I'm interested in Sue's story. <laughs> we oh, said yeah. we were going to yeah. have her tell her story. Right, and the uh, podcast will be over. We're like, we didn't exactly. get to Sue's story. Let's sit and talk forever. I know. I mean, it's, you talked about what's going on currently, and that's really cool, but I know your story is also cool. Yeah. Yeah, so um, how'd you find Jesus? Wow. Um, my life was it has been an up and down when it comes to all that. So um, I grew up in a family that was not church family. Um, my parents grew up going to church, but didn't as adults. And I had a good family. Um, I didn't realize it at the time, but we had what's called a blended family. So I didn't realize that my older siblings had another dad until I was like eight, because he was never in the picture. And um, so that you know, never was part of our blended family. They're they're just my brothers and sisters, you know. But was that uh, hard at eight, or it was just like okay, there's some new information? No, it's just weird. I I don't think I really understood like what the deal was or anything. It wasn't until I was in high school that I really started asking questions about that. Um, but because nobody really talked about it in our family, that it never really was a thing. So we just. We're a family. But my parents were alcoholics, um, more so towards um, my elementary age, um, that they both drank, and <clears throat> they were what you would consider um, the, the um, functional alcoholic. So um, my dad worked full-time job, and then he'd come home at night, and they'd have beer and R&R. That was their thing. And then on Fridays and Saturdays, they'd go out to the bars, and we'd stay home with the brothers and sisters, and me and my little sister, uh, my older sister's five years older than me, and then my older brothers are older than her. Um, me and my little sister are really close. We're 18 months apart, so um, we're like little twin hellions, you know? We are just crazy. And um, so we... Um, you know, th that's kind of our family life. It was always good. They always made it good for us. We always had babysitters if we needed babysitters, and they never brought that home in the way of they weren't angry drunks or anything like that. So um, we were outside playing, and this big bus comes up. It's a Baptist church bus, and some people get off, and they're like, hey, is your mom and dad home? And we're like, yeah, mom, you know, and she comes to the door, and they're like, we would love to come pick your girls up for Sunday school if that would be okay. And so mom's like, you guys want to go to Sunday school? And we're like, yeah, we want to go to Sunday school. So we'd get on the bus on Sunday mornings. And Kathy, I wish I could find Kathy, but Kathy would sing us Sunday school songs all the way to church. On the bus. On the bus. That's awesome. And how we pick up kids. And how old are you? Seven or eight. Okay. Yeah. And is your family... Like, talk about God or anything? No, nothing. Nothing. So this was... This is just new. me and my little sister getting on the bus. We were the only two. We'd get on the bus and go to Sunday school. And um, one Sunday, um, Mrs. O'Malley, um, who was my friend Patrick's mom, um, That's sat a good me name. down. Patrick O'Malley. Patrick amazing. O'Malley, I think yes. You have to be Patrick yeah. if it's O'Malley. There you go. Sat, sat me down and just said, hey, Susie, do you want to accept Jesus into your heart? And I was like, oh, sure, yeah, I want to accept him. And so I said the prayer and asked him into my heart and had no idea what that was. I mean, I just knew that he was with me. She told me he'd always be with me. And I was like, okay. But we only went to that church for maybe six months to a year. I, I remember we went to VBS and we, we were singers in the um, Christmas thing, which my parents came to. So, so you they had did come to that summer to Christmas at least for sure that and that's all I can for sure remember and so um, and then we moved and then we never went back to church again so we never got to go to a church or anything growing up and then um, when I was twelve um, I I literally was the daughter that you wouldn't want. I was, um, I was a two-person daughter, so I could be sweet, kind, loving, probably more of who I am here, just your average person, obey my parents, do my homework, go to school, all those things. And then I would sneak out at night to a friend's house, and we would party with her 16-year-old brother and his friends. And so I tried you drugs. Were 12? I was 12. Ooh. I tried drugs. I did alcohol. Um, there were boys. That's all I'm going to say about that. And um, and so this probably went on for a good six months. So what's interesting is my parents caught on and realized, oh, there's something going on here. And interestingly enough, my dad had applied to move to Spokane. We lived in Lewiston and Clarkson at the time. Um, so all my growing up. And then he gets this 
Where was the Baptist church at? In in Clarkston. In, okay, but yeah. you moved far far enough away from there to. Yep. So we moved. So the bus we route. It wasn't within the bus, the bus route. route yeah. So what's interesting is we came we came home and my dad was like, "Hey, I got this." thing from work. I got this transfer to Spokane, but we don't want to go if you girls don't want to go. So they let us make the decision. So we cried about it, you know, girls. And we were like, okay, we'll go, it, we'll go. Is everybody at home now or is it just your younger... Still, everybody's at home. Okay. No, no, no. I take that back. My two older brothers had moved out and my older sister, she had just moved out. And so it was just me and my little sister. And so we... So I think I was... I must have been... 14 at that time. And so I had went through enough junk in my life and my parents were just kind of like, okay. So we moved. And so when we came to to Spokane, I was like, okay, I got to find my party people because, you know, I'm used to the party life here. None of the party people liked me. There was not one stoner that would befriend me. (laughs) And I was just like, wow. They're normally pretty friendly people. They were not. They did not like me. And so the only girl that liked me was a Christian. And so oh, we became friends. Girl. Yeah, we became <laughs> friends. And I only went to church with her a couple of times. And we went to some youth rally thing one time. And um, that was about the extent of that with my, with my walk with Jesus. And fast forward, I um, am a teen mom. So at 17, I got pregnant with my husband, who's my husband now of, oh my goodness, 37 years. It's been a while. Oh, that is a while. It's been a while. And, um, you know, uh, how did you and how'd you meet your husband? Uh, (laughs) all city dances back in the day, they used to have all city dances and you could go to these dances. And so I met his best friend, Dan, um, at this dance and Rob was there too. And so, uh, I started dating Dan. Where do, where do these take place? These all city dances, um, hotels okay. and granges, and this one was at a place called Players and Spectators Junior. So uh, before ten o'clock, they would have dance time for youth people, and then after ten, it would change to a bar. So you had every all the younger people had to leave. So you would go and be in like a bar setting and dance the evening away until they kicked you out. <laughs> That's awesome. All city dance. All city dance. It kind of made yeah. me flash back to like the enchantment under the sea dance from yeah, Back to the Future. No, it it, like it, it sounds like a, a scene no, from no, Footloose no. or something. No. Like, or back to the, we're going to the all city dance. I could literally. Look, Sounds like an old school 50s yeah, movie or no, something. No, no. We were, we were 80s. It was in the 80s at that time, so there was plenty of not 50s kind of things. I'm <laughs> old, but I'm not that old. <laughs> All right, so you guys you know, meet Dan, and then, but then you meet Rob through Dan. Yeah, and so I, I, basically, yeah. I basically found out that Dan was dating five other girls at the same time. <laughs> See you, Dan. But what's funny is that me and Rob became friends, and we would talk on the phone and stuff. And so all of a sudden, I'm, I'm realizing I like him. And so I tell him I like him, and he's like, okay. And so I'm like, all right. So I, I tell Dan I'm done, and he's like, okay. Well, I said, I, I want to date somebody else. And he's like, do I know him? And I'm like, yeah. And he's like, well, who is he? And I'm like, I'm, no, we're just not going to go there. And so he names off everybody we know but Rob. <laughs> and then he goes, it's not Rob, is it? And I'm like, yes, it is. Is that okay? And he's like, oh, yeah, that's fine. <laughs> and how old are you at this point? I'm 16. 16. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, and then Rob's mom made him go into the military. And so uh, uh, before he left, let's just say I got pregnant. And so when he's in boot camp, I call to tell him that we're pregnant. And then a month later, I call him to tell him we're having twins. And so, yeah, let's just say Rob was shocked for the first. I, I don't even know if he probably remembers boot camp because of he, all that. Is he 18 at that point? He's just 19. 19. Wow. Yeah. And yeah. he's, you know, boot camp at some Far away, right? Yes. Yep. He was in Kentucky. And that's an era for these young listeners of the podcast where communication wasn't so handy. No. Not like it is today. No, nope. I'd have to wait access. for him to call 
to be able to talk to him. And so, yeah, I'd have to wait for him to call. And then I'd wait for him to call back so if we had a hard... So how long you have news that you're waiting to give him that you're pregnant and you have to wait till he calls? Yeah, I don't know. I think it was in within a day or two. Okay. And yeah. then the twins thing, that, that's that got to be so painful. Like, yeah. I have this and I need to share it with someone and I just have to wait yeah. until they call me to share the like, life-altering news. Yeah. And so um, here's the hard part. So when I tell him we're having twins, he goes... Oh, okay, I'm going to have to call you back, and he hangs up. No, no. So I'm bawling, like, he's not going to marry me, and I'm going to be alone with these babies, and it's going to be horrible. So finally, he calls me back later that night, and I'm like, are you okay? Are you still going to marry me? He's like, could you give me a minute? I haven't even asked you yet. And I'm like, I know, but, ah, uh, you know, I'm just panicked. And he's like, it's okay, I just... I just wasn't expecting that because it probably didn't help that I said, while he's in boot camp, I said, so you know how we talked about you being in the military for 20 years? And he's like, yeah. Keep in mind, he probably had the worst day ever of running and all the things you do in boot camp. He's like, yeah. And I'm like, well, we might want to do that because we're having twins. And that's when he hung up. <laughs> He needed some oh processing gosh. time. Yep, he needed he, some processing okay. time. He, he didn't go, get called to like a drill or something? No. Okay. <laughs> so where are you at with your uh, journey with Jesus during this time? Yeah, so neither one of us really are walking with Jesus. You know, we don't really, you know, think about Jesus. He's not been in either of our lives all that much as we were growing up. And then we get stationed in Tacoma after he did a year in Korea. And so he got to pick a place he wanted to go, and Tacoma was close enough to home, so that's what he did. And keep in mind, we had twins. One passed away when he was 49 days old, and then um, Jameson uh, needed a lot of help. So he got out of the hospital after two and a half months of being in the NICU and all that stuff, and so he had just, you know tons of problems and need lots of help. So we, um, so I didn't go with him to any of the places he went. He went to Korea for a year because it was without your family that you would go. And I stayed home so that Jameson could get the help that he needed. And then when we moved to Tacoma, then there was facilities and everything there. So we all moved together there. And I think we were there about four years. And that was, that was the start of your guys' relationship. Yeah. That first year, mm -hmm. babies and be and it yourself. was actually um, when Jamie was three is when we moved to Tacoma. So we had three years in Spokane okay. was Rob, before he moved. So was Rob done with boot camp, and had he not gone to Korea when you guys had the babies? Yes, he was done with boot camp, but they have AIT, which is like the schooling. Yep. And he was in AIT. And so when I um, went into labor, I was it was too early. Um, and so we were able to call the pastor, the chaplain, and they can do an emergency leave. So he was able to get emergency leave to come home for when they were born. So he got to do that. And then um, he had been home um, before that and talked to the chaplain uh, about what had happened and where I was at physically. And he said, you need to get emergency leave and then you need to go and you need to stay there. So you need to go into what is the MEP station, military entrance processing station here in Spokane, and tell them that you need to be stationed here. Now he was only like an E2, which is like super peon in the the ranks, Low right? Man on the total you pole. have to be an E5 to work at the MEP station. And the commander there was able to get him a um, compassionate replacement here. So he got to be here for two years, wow. which was fantastic. Yeah. And then he went to Korea from there. That's, yeah, I mean, that's what should happen. Yeah. You got a brand new marriage. You, were you guys married at this point? Yes, we got married in July Okay, when he came home on his leave after he got done with his schooling. With, okay. And you got... Or no, you're, with, you're with, 18 with having twins early? I was 17. Still 17. Just turned 17. He just turned 20. And we had twins. Twins and early and in the pregnancy. Three, three, three months early. Yeah. Three months. I mean, three months early. That. Yeah, yeah he needed to be home. Me and my brother were at least two months. I think it was... Um, you were there. You don't remember? I, I don't remember. <laughs> none of it. So yeah, I mean we yeah we were two months. And before. you guys yeah. are are trying to do this all together, but then w really not with God and Jesus in the nope. picture. And so yep. So you're in Tacoma and stationed there. Mm -hmm. um, is that where you went to 
because I know your story. So yes. the Billy Graham experience. Yeah. When was that and how'd that come about? Yeah. So we had been in Tacoma for a little while and my mom and dad had ca- called and said they're coming to sp- Tacoma to go to the Billy Graham crusade. And I said, oh, okay. And she's like, do you want to go with us? I'm like, sure. Well, let's, can we take that detour? Sure. So how did your folks get interested in Billy Graham? Well, they actually started going to church. I don't know why, but my, my parents, let me tell you, my parents um, became recovering alcoholics, started AA when I was uh, 10. And so they started that process. I went to um, Alateen with my sister while they were in AA meetings. So we were at the, what they called the Alano Club in in Clarkston, like all the time. And we loved it because they had a pool table and they had a foosball table and everybody played cards and they loved us because they taught us all these games and they just had a, we had a great time. Pancakes on Saturday mornings, it was fantastic. Like a retreat center. It was like a retreat center, it was great. So yeah, so that was our experience after that. So my parents were were sober and decided that they wanted to start going to church. And um, and didn't you say earlier they were raised as Christians? Yes, they both went to church. Um, and so, yeah, they were both Christians. And so they, um, they had heard this was happening. And so they invited us to come. Well, we were apartment managers on the weekends at that time. And so we uh, couldn't leave because this was before cell phones, you know. <laughs> Before any pagers, there was nothing. You could only have a phone. So as an apartment manager, somebody had to answer the phone all the time. And so um, me and Rob would share that duty. And so um, he stayed home to answer the phone. I went to the Billy Graham crusade. And uh, so we get there, and and here we are in the Tacoma Dome. It's humongous, and there's all these people and all these kids. And I'm like, wow, look at all these kids here, Mom. I said, they must have a huge Alateen. And she goes, what? And I said, you know, Alateen, like me and Sandy went to it. She goes, what do you think this is? I said, isn't this an AA convention? And she's like, no, it's a church thing. And I'm like, oh, and she goes, why would you think it's an AA convention? I said, well, isn't it Bill, that guy, Bill from AA, Billy, Billy Graham, isn't he the AA guy? And she goes, no, that's Bill W. And I'm pretty sure at that point he was already deceased. And I was like... Oh, you she, thought Billy Graham was the head AA guy. Like, I did. I had no idea. So anyway, it was quite the funny thing. So, so I'm sitting there and I'm listening. And every time he says, if you're not sure if you are saved, I'm going to give you an opportunity. And every time I was like, I'm not sure. I, I don't know. Like, was that time that I was a little kid and I said yes at eight? Was that enough? Did I do it? it? Did I? Am I going to heaven and all that? Right? I didn't know. And so when he finally gave the, I want you to stand up and come. My mom said I popped up out of my chair and I zipped past everybody and I was like one of the first people down front. And what I haven't told you is that. I was so depressed because of the loss of my baby that um, I struggled. I, I, I struggled with housework and with just getting through the day. And I didn't work. I stayed home with Jameson and continued to help him. And Rob would go to work. And um, I didn't have an outlet. I didn't have people around me. I didn't have friends because I was in a new place. And so I literally was um, just making it through life, doing the things you do just to get through life. So when I get down to the the platform in front of Billy Graham, I felt this amazing peace. And I had not felt peace probably ever because of all my life. And it was just, I couldn't explain it. I just knew I felt it and I knew something changed. I knew it, as Craig says, know it in my knower, right? I knew it. I just knew something had changed. And from that point on, I go home and I tell Rob, hey, I just accepted Jesus in my heart and we're going to church. And he's like, okay. And I'm like, okay? Like, you want to go to church? He goes, sure, I'll go to church. He goes, I'm like, like, do you know anything? Like, what do you know about church? I'm like, we've never had this discussion before. Like, what's the deal? And he's like, he goes, when I was in Korea, I went to church every week. I'm like, you did? He goes, um, in Korea, there's nothing good that happens off base. So church is what's happening on base. You go to church. Wow. <laughs> well, good and, for him. I never knew that part of your yeah. story. Mm-hmm. And what's your, 
if you think back, like as you're going to Billy Graham, like what's your take on who God is? You know, if you look, because it sounds like your, you know, young experience was positive. There was mm-hmm. fun people, Karen on the bus singing and, and just the, the, you know, community you experienced there. Oh, so yeah. what's your take kind of to maybe help some listeners if they have someone in a situation who doesn't sound like you were anti-God or opposed mm-hmm. to, just not like super interested or like what's God going to do for me? Do you remember anything yeah. as far as just your feelings and thoughts towards God or? Yeah. It, so, um, as I was doing all my naughty things, um, I remember going to the bathroom and being really drunk and feeling scared because there's boys there who want more than I want to give them. And I would just pray. And I didn't know if God would hear me. I would just say, God, I don't know what I'm doing. I'm afraid I need your help. And that's all I would do. And I would come out and they would have all left to go to the store to get more beer or something. And so God actually was working on my behalf. I just didn't recognize it and understand that's what he was doing. So when my mom said it was a church thing, I was just like, oh, okay, I haven't been to a church thing for a really long time. So I was totally like open to it, like, okay, I'm happy to be here. I'm fine to be here. I didn't understand what I was going to get from it at all. I had no idea what was going to happen or any clue, even like what would happen in the church service or a big thing like this. It was just so new to me. So I was just along for the ride, watching the show. Right. You were open to it, but you weren't going, okay, God, and sitting there, Billy Graham, I I feel in this depression. I feel in this funk in life. Help me. Like, Mm -mm. it's just, but you're open. Yeah. I'm, yeah. I'm, I, I didn't come seeking anything. I just literally was there because that's what we were doing. And I was just like, okay. But that, that night started it. Like oh, from, from there on, right? It wasn't one hundred percent. Yeah, like literally, we started looking for a church, and we went to the Baptist church because <laughs> that's what you knew. That's what we did. Yeah, my husband was like, "I don't know if we're Baptist, honey," and I said, "No, no, this." I went to the uh, to the Baptist church when I was on the bus, and we should go. And we went, and it just wasn't our flavor. It was very conservative, and everybody was dressed up, and I felt we both felt really uncomfortable. And we walked out of there, and Rob was like, "Yeah." I think we need to keep looking. And I said, okay. And so uh, we had gone to a couple different churches that weren't really our flavor. And then we found this little community church. And I was like, okay, this is the church. Now keep in mind, we're still apartment managers and we're still having to um, watch the phones. So I would go to first service. I'd come home. He'd go to second service. And so we did that forever. And so we went to the pastor's house for a get-to-know-you couples thing, and we walk in together, and they're looking at us like, You two are together? Yeah, like... When did that happen? Yeah, and so they had no idea we were married. That's funny. (laughs) Because I would take Jameson with me, and then... Rob would just go. So they probably thought I was a single mom. There's, yeah, and there's <laughs> some old ladies praying for that single mom. Keep yeah. showing up with that baby. Yep, exactly. <laughs> oh, well, funny. same thing happened when I ha- got pregnant with Julianne. Somebody um, saw Rob in his workplace and said, you know, was realizing he went to Mission Church. And they were like, hey, you know, we, we've we seen you. And how did, you know, and they're all excited that he's there. And, and he's like, yeah, you probably know my wife, Sue Walker. And they're like, oh. I wondered who the dad of that baby was <laughs> because that's, we, we just, we move and go and do our thing and we don't realize people don't know we're together, but you know, he does this and I do that. He's, he's not a kid's person. And so he's always in there and he's still trying to say he's uh <laughs> Mr. Sue. That's right. All that's the right. Time. <laughs> so, yeah. So our, our journey after that just was um, continually, looking for a church because we bounced around a lot in our younger years through with apartment management. So we were in Tacoma for a while. We were in Renton for a while. We were in Bellevue for a while. Then when we were able to get out of the military and move back over here, um, we um, were in Spokane for a while and then we moved back over there and then we moved back over here. But when we got here, we, um, we're looking for a church, and my mom and dad were doing the same because they had moved over here, and they knew some people that went to Spokane Valley Foursquare um, eons ago, like 1998 was maybe. Was I the pastor at that time? Yes, you were the pastor. And well, I, didn't know if I think it was 1998. 
I think oh, that yeah. was right around the time because it was before we moved to the school. So she's remember she's not that old. You started in nineteen eighty six. That's right, nineteen hundred and eighty six. He always thinks we're about the same age. <laughs> I don't think that. <laughs> I'm way younger than you. <laughs> yeah, so we went to Spokane Valley Foursquare, and literally we like walked in. Your whole family, in. your parents. W- yep, w- mom and dad, and me just, and Jameson. Which is and just, Rob. just to be clear is. The same church. Mission Church was Maribu Chapel, which was Spokane, Spokane. Valley Foursquare Church. That's correct. And technically, legally, we're still Spokane Valley Foursquare Church. Correct. That's right. DBA. Legal documents. As far as the IRS That's right. Yeah. 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 But um, we had been to enough churches um, trying to find a church, which for people that don't know church, it's hard. It's really hard to find a church where you feel comfortable, where you feel like the people are the kind of people you want to be around that would be your church family. And um, so when we walked in, and it was just very friendly. And then um, the church service happened, and we walked out of there and went, well, there's our church home. We just found it. We knew it, and then we stayed and stuck, and it was amazing. Yeah. It's just kind of like you're Billy Graham now. You're like, I know this is real. This mm-hmm. is God. There's peace. This is something I haven't experienced. It's kind of a funny thing, but a cool thing when God does that, when you find connection with people, and you're like, hey, yeah. I think we're going to be here. I, as a new college student, trying to find a church in Seattle area. Mm. So somebody was like, hey, we're going to this church. You want to come? Went. I think it was like an invite day. And their their shtick on the, hey, there's going to be more people here, was to make it a western theme day. And growing up, like, zero. <laughs> like, I liked all music but country. Now I've been married to Amy long enough. <laughs> and you live in North Idaho now. So. Yeah. Anyway, that's changed. But I go to this church. They're all, like, cowboy boots, hats. They're, like, I think there were hay bales on the stage and, like, doing some, like, I'm like, this is not my jam. But it's a great church. It was rent and assembly. Like, I know a lot of the people there, and through college, it was a great church. But, uh, you know, you showed up, you go, nope. You guys are doing country. <laughs> I didn't really realize it was, like, just a special thing for that day. <laughs> but not my people. Well, your mom is Cindy. You should have known. What? The theme. There's oh, a theme. Yeah. That's I, the way she is. You know, yeah, everything's a theme. Yeah, I know. I just, <laughs> you know, wasn't putting it together. So, so you've been, so when you guys moved here and stuff, Following Jesus, I mean, um, you've been on our, our team for... I think it's been 20 years. I think so. 20 yeah. years. Yeah, I think this year was 20. I still remember the day I called you and you were working at Tomlinson Black. Yeah. So real, not, not too long after finally landing here in Spokane. Yeah, it, yeah. Wasn't, it wasn't very long after. And you've been doing um, kids, working with Cindy for a long time, mm-hmm. uh, doing kids and... Um, but recently changing to taking over uh, Freedom Ministries. Yeah. And recently, as far as just uh, being the the lead person, but you've been going through it and involved with Freedom Ministries for about how long? Probably 10 years. I was going to say 10 or 12. Yeah. And and it's you love it. Oh, yeah, it's my passion. It's my heart. Talk to us a little bit about that, just because I think that's one of the key things for you and your story, just helping people follow Jesus and what it means to follow Jesus is to find that wholeness and that freedom that he offers. Just talk a little bit about, you know, just how how you get excited about helping people and what we got coming up here for freedom and launching yeah. next Thursday. Yeah, it is. Um, you know, it's funny because I came to freedom to be there for somebody else. And so I'm there for somebody else, and I'm like, well, if I'm going to do it, I'm going to do it for myself, just along with her, and we'll just do it together. And um, I remember going through it the first time and trying to figure out, like, well, what's wrong with me? You know, what's the thing I need to work on? What's that thing? Okay, God, it must be food. You know, this is a long-time problem for me. It must be food, so I just need to focus on the food. And as I'm going through the pages and as I'm working through stuff and I'm, I'm trying to help my friend and stuff, I'm like, oh, there's, oh, this is not pretty. I have stuff. I didn't think I had stuff, but God just peeled like a little onion layer back, right? And showed me a little something. So I start realizing I have a problem with control and I control to ma- manipulate situations to protect myself. And so... Um, it's interesting. It comes out in different weird ways, but um, 
when I figured that out, I started working on that and God started healing that and started helping me with that and things changed. I was like, wow. So then I was like, I need to go through it again because the first time I was so focused on, I got to figure out what's wrong with me that I didn't leave room for God to help me to see what he was trying to help me work through. So everybody has stuff. Yeah. What would what would be your, your advice for someone as they're getting started or wanting mm-hmm. to tackle what, what's a what's a better approach for that than for someone jumping into working on some things? Yeah, I would just say just um, be there in surrender. God, I want to be able to hear you through what I'm going to go through. And I know there's a couple of people that are jumping in this time and they're like, I don't even know why I'm coming, but I feel like I should come. And God's going to show them what it is. And it's good. They're going to work through the pages and and realize what it is he wants them to work on. And it's pretty common. A lot of people's stories like, no, I'm just I'm doing it for my friend. They need help, so I'm going to be mm-hmm. a good friend. Yes, I don't. I'm good. I probably don't need anything, but <laughs> I'm going to go with Craig because Craig, oh boy, can I Craig, see some things? Some. Yeah, everybody knows <laughs> Craig has <laughs> issues. <laughs> so that uh, that's excellent. Like just starting that place of mm-hmm. surrender and openness. Like, okay, God, versus yeah. going, <clears throat> I know what the. I know why I'm broken. I know the thing. Mm -hmm. Let's just go fix it. Let's go get the one, two, three recipe and done. Uh, Another thing about your story that I think is maybe helpful to our listeners, it certainly encourages me to think about it in this way, and that is that uh, before you ever came on staff, which was 20 years ago, uh, you were already serving in the church. You were already passionate about following Jesus and, you know, doing whatever he had for you to do, and you didn't really necessarily care what that was, just however you were needed and what, however he wanted to use you. You came on staff in one position, one role, then you went to another one, then another one, then another and You had like, what, six or seven different job descriptions, and I you're think, transitioning now. Yes, I think I still do. I think I just wear a lot of hats. <laughs> but my point in all that is that, that the role that you had or the position you occupied, that didn't define you. That was just an assignment. Yeah. And, and I think a lot of times people, I, I hear people say this, I, I know the Lord has a ministry for me someday, I just don't know what it is. And they're thinking about a position or a title or a mm. specific role. No, we're all called to yeah. follow Jesus and serve however we can along the way. And we'll have different assignments, different things that we do, and those seasons come and they go. But we continue to follow Jesus. And you're a great example of that, the flexibility, the willingness, like, hey, if this assignment's done, I'll just embrace the next one, whatever you have for me, Lord. And that's the case that's happening with this transition from kids to freedom. It's like, um, I've always thought I would just do kids till the end, you know? And God literally spoke to my heart and said, you know, I've been praying for kids for a year. I felt like something needed to change, but I couldn't quite put my finger on it. I was like, God, I don't know what it is. I'm not sure what it is. And then I went to this conference and God just started moving in my heart. And I'm sitting there doing my hair one day. And literally, um, I'm like praying for, for kids, and I'm like, God, what is it? And he said, well, you need to get out of your seat. You, you're the thing. You're, you're like, not you. It's <laughs> you. You need to get out of your seat, and you need to go do freedom and do adult ministries. And I'm like, what? I'm like, no. Like, what? And so I'm like sitting on my tub going, okay, Jesus, I'm going to have to pray about this because this is like, what are you even talking about? I mean, I was so shocked. I was like, what? And so as I prayed about it, you know, um, God just said, you know, this is what I want you to do. And so I was like, okay, God, well, let me think about this. So the Martha in me jumps right up and starts saying, okay, start making your list. How is this going to work? How are you going to do this? And the Lord said, nope, nope. He said, you need to be Mary, and I don't want you to tell anybody. I want you just to be Mary and sit at my feet and wait for me. And I was just like, oh, okay. I'm okay to go to freedom, but this Mary thing, (laughs) I'm like, seriously? Like, Mary's going to just sit and be quiet and wait on the Lord, and I love to do and go. As you know, as you all know, I am a servant. That's just what I like to do. And and I was like, okay, God, I will be Mary. And what came out of that was a reverence for listening to God, to knowing that he had the plan, and I didn't have to make up the plan, and that I could just wait for him. And recently, he showed me that he's he's paving the road in front of me, but he's only doing it two feet at a time. 
Because when he only does it two feet at a time, then I literally have to just be so focused on him and so paying attention to what he wants that I'm not making it up down the road because that's my nature. I love to make a plan and I can give you a whole printout of everything, but it's like, He's like, nope, we're just we're just doing two feet at a time. It's like he might know you or something. He does know me. Does. That is 100% <laughs> for sure. <laughs> and it's so good. And that's one thing I've been learning just the last, how many days again? 11? 11 Anyways, days. through 23, just more reliance, more trust, more yeah. just connection, more prayer, more, okay, God, I'm okay, just to release control. And it's, and it's these periods of rest and Sabbath and intentional, like, okay, I'm going to just choose not to be productive. I'm going to cease. Yep. I'm going to be done. And then God does some amazing things, and more gets done than if I was trying to spin my wheels. Yeah, yeah that's what that's. What I'm deep in it this week just with pursuing and understanding God as our guide. And I think so often mm. we're so, and this is a perfect example, we're so, I think a lot of us in life are like, okay, what's down the road? What's next year? Let's make a five-year plan. Let's make a dream board. Let's, like, think about this stuff. And, well, God, I need you to guide me. Who do you want me to marry? What job do you want me to have? You're my guide. What does this look like? And I think the more often we just focus on being close to God, yeah, right? like, God, I just need to be close to you. It's two feet at a time. But if I'm close to you, I know you're guiding, yeah. right? And so I'm just going to, uh, I think f- way too often as specifically as Americans and, and as Christians, we want to know that God's got a plan and he's got it laid out. And I think a lot of times his plan is just stay close to me. I got you. Yeah. Like, are you close to me? Cool. We're going the right way. Right. And, and ultimately, uh, Kyle, ministry um when when we want to have an impact on other people and an influence, you know, for the kingdom, we want to make a difference in somebody's life. What we don't realize is that just flows out of our relationship with Jesus. Mm-hmm. We we sometimes make it about the to dos, you know, the well, I got to do this and I got to do that and I got to this is how this works and these are the mechanics and these are the principles. No, just just be with Jesus, and as you walk with Jesus, out of the overflow of your relationship with Him, God will use you to influence others. That may take on, like we've already said, different assignments and roles and titles it may not it it that doesn't matter that's all secondary it just flows out of your relationship with jesus yeah Yeah, and to your point earlier craig it's not um you know positional that we are followers of jesus like uh sunday i think i don't remember who said you walked in somebody said i don't know if it's me somebody said hey pastor craig dalen kessler shout out well, did he? But then he, he said, "Well, should we be calling him Pastor?" Yeah, he still? said, "Hey, is good that, morning, Pastor Craig." Is that how that Dylan went down? Because then he said, "Yeah, do I call?" He's like, "I can't not call him Pastor Craig." He's Pastor Craig. He was thinking positionally only versus mm. the person Craig, right. who has been gifted by God as a pastor and still pastoring. It just looks a little different. Mm-hmm. And but he was wondering that same thing. Yeah. He's like, no, yeah. Craig's still the light and love of Jesus in the world. So Pastor Craig, works. I was talking to somebody the other day about that very thing, uh, Scott. That. That they asked, you know, how's it going in retirement and all that? And, and do you miss being a pastor? And I said, no, but it's been a transition. And what's helped me is to, to rewind back to the days before I was ever a pastor, uh, before I ever even thought about being a missionary, which was what I initially thought. Um, I was just somebody that loved Jesus. I just was somebody that followed Jesus. And that actually never changed. I had 44 years as a lead pastor. That was an assignment. But, but I was always that guy decided to follow Jesus, and I'm still that guy, and that's who I am today, and that's the thing that's enduring, not the office or the title. Yep, yep. and you're staying close to him, and you're honoring his name, and that's what it means for him to be our guide. Right. Yep. Tune in this Sunday while I talk a little bit more about it. <laughs> Sounds <laughs> nice. good. Oh, there's thanks a for, for Sunday. Thanks for being on the podcast. Absolutely. Thanks for sharing your story so transparently. I know it's going to be helpful for, it was helpful for me. It's going to be helpful for people listening in. So and thanks for following Jesus and yeah. helping our community find wholeness and healing and freedom in him. So somebody listening in, you should jump into Freedom Group. Or if you know somebody, uh, you could just go with your friend who needs it. And you, could, you might have. <laughs> find there you go. Well. For that person, it starts this Thursday at what time? Uh, uh, yeah, not today, Thursday. January Next 26th. Thursday, the 26th at in, 6 o'clock. In 2023. In, case you're in 2023. That's right. That's but, for Eric. But if you're listening <laughs> on, you could just, I mean, it's probably not too far off from a freedom group happening. It or it's that's right. Is going MC. on. Yeah. Yeah. Slash freedom, you'll get all the information That's about right. whatever year it is. Freedom's still happening. You want to find freedom in Jesus, head over there and get yes. to the group soon. <laughs> That's right. All right. We'll make it a great week being the light and love of Jesus in the world. We'll talk to you next time.